Oh, hey, hey guys. Hey, hey, how's it going? <laughs> I'm Darren with Arbitrage Trade, and this is Wednesdays after the bell. I think this is our fourth episode. Yeah. Because if I go yeah. off of the wagers, which were one to one to one, then this yes. will be our fourth show. So awesome. We have not been canceled by Jim Cramer or anyone else yet. Yay. My <laughs> guests are Daniel Hopwood, ex institutional wealth manager, and our founder and CEO, Royce Wells. Hey, Royce. Hey, Man, you're looking right. good today. That natural daylight looks good. Uh, give me my darkness. I have gone further into the basement, and you've you've come out of the basement and look a lot better. <laughs> I, I am a resident that. retail investor who evidently lives in the basement <laughs> of his parents. I hear my parents walking upstairs. I got to be quiet down here. Okay. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about, tail of the tape, it's World War III. Oh, oh, wait, it's not World War III, but boy, does it look like we're going that way. So, Daniel, what you got to say about all the wars that are happening right now and what it's going to do to us? In the stock yes. Market and so ways. the way the market ended last week is we had the worst performing week of the year. And as we've seen go into today, stocks keep going down. You know, we've seen a pretty big crash in uh, crypto as well. But with the Middle East conflicts now developing, you know, Israel and Iran, there is now a threat to energy supplies. And everyone's really speculating that the cost of especially oil is potentially about to skyrocket. But with all of that, you know, bad news, we see that the dollar has had its best week in the last 18 months, which, you know, if you're American, we kind of like a little bit. Dollar. USA, USA. USA. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's happened, though, a little bit of a pullback on both fronts there. I mean, uh, like the end of today, the, the stock market did go back down again, by the way. It was pumped early in the morning, and then it came back down, and we were red again uh, This uh, at close. Um, the oil did come down, though. It came down to uh, right around 83-ish, I think. Yeah. So yeah, it yeah, actually fell back down again, but we know what can happen with that and the manipulations, et cetera. Yeah, well, happen. if it falls too fast, remember, there's probability statistics. If it falls too fast, that means it springs back up. So typically it's like you, you get rid of the you basically get rid of the people who may have been have stop losses and then let it ride up. OK. All right. Uh, it, I did, will say that the crude oil report came out today as well. I don't know if that any type of influence on the price, but uh, it was previously five point eight four million barrels. The hmm. forecast was only one point six million barrels. That's crazy. And the actual ended oh. up being 2.47 barrels. So uh, whether that had any impact on that or not, don't know. But uh, that did come out today, the cruel oil inventory report. So we'll move along to uh, anything else on that, World War Three. Let's not talk about that. Yeah. Anyway. No. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's not do that. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's move talk. on. <laughs> yeah, yes. And play it, play I hope it that is surely tinfoil hat and no, nothing real comes of it. That's right. Let's just hope that they're all planning these moves just to make money and it's not the real deal. Yes. So, because then Bush will have to come out and say nuclear. All right. Um, <laughs> foreign exchange. <laughs> all right, Royce, let's let's talk about do No, we're not supposed to talk about the dollar. But we're going to talk about the dollar a little bit here. Just a yes. little bit. Not too much. You bit. always spook the market when you talk about the dollar. <laughs> got a dollar for you. <laughs> um, nope, no so anyway, what's, can, what's, what's causing, no, uh, let's just say what's causing the, <laughs> yes. no free candy. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> so let's just do a quick uh, simplification of it then. What What's caused the dollar to go back over 106? And is it going to stay there? Will it come back down? What's, what's going on with the dollar right now? So the dollar's basically, it's rising. As you know, the dollar is a reserve currency. When times get uncertain, Every country in the world goes to the World Bank and says, you know what, we're going to put some of our wealth in the primary reserve currency, which basically has created demand for the dollar, all of the tension that's happening over there in the Middle East. So um, same thing um, with the Bitcoin halving coming up. People are getting nervous for everyone who rode the ride all the way from the 48,000 valuation all the way up to the 72K valuation. That's about as good 75% uh, uh, return on your money. So you'd be a fool not to take profit, right? Remember, they always tell you, sell the news. Once again, it's also versus the dollar. So with crypto people selling and going back to the dollar and the tensions in the Middle East going back to the dollar, the dollar's just naturally rising. 
from high demand. Okay. Any input there, Mr. Daniel? Oh, Royce, I actually had a question for you. You know, we've seen can gold continue to skyrocket. How do you think that affects the price of the dollar, like, you know, global reserve currencies, especially with, you know, worldwide conflict going on? Do you think well, that further escalates the dollar? Do you think people kind of abandon the dollar and go to gold as like an intermediary? No, I think they basically never, remember, diversify, never have all your eggs in one basket. So basically, just like their hedge funds, basically like, okay, if something were to happen to the dollar with cryptocurrency being where it is, it's a threat. It's the new contender, right? So basically, yeah, gold is going to be up because they're like, some people are even backing their um, cryptocurrency with gold. So as cryptocurrency rises, it also pulls gold with it. So do you think gold will continue to reach new higher highs or do you think it's gonna see some kind of pull back and stagnate um i think overall it may try to keep up with inflation so basically mm -hmm. the amount of inflation that we've seen so far i'm expecting it basically i think we've had about 20 percent increase in inflation over the last couple of years so that means the dollar should be up about 20 percent or so from where it was about two years ago so as long as it keeps up with inflation i think um it it it's sustainable Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, let's. Oh, I, f I gotta say my favorite uh, line from a from a series though, uh -oh. to end this segment, which is dollar dollar bill, y'all. Uh. <laughs> You're welcome, Wu Tang. Big Wu Tang fan. fan. <laughs> You're welcome, Wu Tang. <laughs> subscribe, subscribe, and like down below. Never mind. That sounds. Good. All right, we're we're gonna go to <laughs> on to Bitcoin, which we talk about lately. We talk about Tesla and Bitcoin a lot here, uh, but they are very relevant. And there is a how the having event is coming up, and it is predicted it will happen Saturday at this point. So um, yes. just talk about that. Talk about the having. I know that uh, the first having, just for some historical references, was in 2012. And it went from 50 to 25 and the price was a whopping $12 and 20 cents. Yeah. yeah. If only you had put in and bought. I wish I wasn't messing around in seventh grade then. trying to learn how to spell. <laughs> <laughs> you should have been stealing lunch money and buying Bitcoin. <laughs> have you guys seen the meme that it's like my greatest uh, regret in life is not buying for four uh, or uh, foreclosed properties, but I was in fourth grade. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, might have another chance coming up. All right, never mind. We won't yeah, do that. Right. Commercial property. Uh, but <laughs> after yeah. that first having, yeah, <laughs> after that first having, there was a bull run, which typically happens. Uh, and I think that's what's kind of pushed it up right now because everybody's anticipating that after this, as historically has happened, after the havings, then we get a bull run. Uh, but back then, the Bitcoin uh, did run up to about 1K. Uh, by the next year. So that's why I think people see history and they think it'll repeat itself. So is it going to repeat itself, Royce? You think? I don't think it's going to repeat itself. And this is why. As okay. as each having event basically is, pardon me, is based on um, how many coins can be mined, right? So in 2012, basically people were rushing to buy miners. They were rushing, they were creating demand for Bitcoin, right? But at this point, I think there are about 21 million total coins that are to be able to be mined and circulated, That's right? supposed to be the max, yes. And where we are now, it's okay. It's going from, I think, 6.2 down to 3.125 um, at this halving. So it means if you mine it, your reward for mining it and actually doing it is about 3.125 Bitcoin. That means the electricity to do it, people may not do it just because of electricity. It may not, you may not break even. There's a price um, evaluation, price risk, and basically return on investment evaluation. If you have old hardware, you, you just keep mining. If you're trying to get hardware after the after the having or near the having, yeah, it 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 basically it may be too expensive and at the current prices. Yeah, they're they're currently selling like forty, fifty thousand dollars for for the ant miners and uh, s19 s22 i think that's up to s24 now uh the bitcoin miners but who's going to pay that if the price of bitcoin is falling and you're you're getting half of what you were getting last year 
Right. And, and if you think about it, the there's a huge rise in energy costs and it's going to keep going up because you have the demand of AI, which also puts a lot of pressure on these grids. And you already had the Bitcoin. So as the AI becomes more and more, it's going to take more energy to power that plus Bitcoin mining. And I guarantee you that price is going to go up to to actually mine the Bitcoin. Right. I mean, that's that's kind of what the it tells me. Yeah, your your price are pretty much doubling because they're having. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Mister um, Mister Millennial uh, Hedge Funder, Mister Bitcoin Cheerleader, I see your pom pom somewhere behind you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> give me a B, give me a T, give me a <laughs> BTC baby. No, I mean, All right. yeah, put, put, as you <laughs> as you foreshadow, you know what I'm about to say. I'm going to take the yes. opposite side of this, but not yes. not completely. So, you know, when you look at the halving, um, there's typically a run up into it, a small dip, and then you really see the gains over the next two years before another cycle starts. Now, to Royce's point, as every halving has occurred, you mine less, mine less Bitcoin per transaction, right? And we've seen the rise of the cycle of Bitcoin decrease over time. So, you know, I don't know the exact numbers, but let's say from the last halving we saw, a 400% increase. And I don't think we're, you know, we're like, maybe we'll see $100,000 in this cycle, right? So we'll make, what is that from, it's at 60,000 right now. So a little bit under a 50% increase, but are we going to see 150, 200,000, which people speculate? I don't think so, but I think we will still see increased, you know, buying throughout this cycle due to the ETF. It's just so much easier for people to be into it. Um, you know, the brokerage firms are going to start pushing it eventually once they, you know, their people understand what they're selling. And as the news continues to pick up on this and, you know, an ETH ETF in the coming future, um, it, it I think it'll still see, you'll see the historical trend, but just not to the degree in which it's happened before. So okay, the mission so returns. Yeah. Yeah. So probably better than the S and P. Not financial advice, but <laughs> I remember some uh, people who were made fun of called apes that kept saying 100k price points, and now now uh, I used to get roasted at Goldman um, <laughs> when I would bring up uh, crypto to my advisors. <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, Mr. Fink will tell you, "Hey, that's terrible stuff. Hey, where can I get my hands on it?" <laughs> I can make money on this. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Yes. Fink. Um, all right. BlackRock. Um, so well, let's move on to Tesla. We like, again, we got to touch uh, Elon a little bit sometime. We've been Every talking week. about Tesla a lot. I feel kind we of bad have, for Elon. <laughs> but there's, it's always in the news, though. That's why. Because, I mean, yeah. it really is. It, and the news is after his butt. I mean, you can't, there's no way to deny it. I mean, the media, news, politicians, everybody's after Elon. So. Uh, how dare him try to make free speech? Uh, it's we, <laughs> so Tesla. What did they do this week uh, of news? Of news, there, Daniel. They got they, rid of the folks. Yeah, they fired ten percent of their global workforce. So you know, I think that kind of indicates of all the other things we talked about of them missing their production and revenue numbers that they are starting to you know really kind of hurt on the company. And I do have to imagine. Elon being Elon is implementing a lot of AI within the company yes, to be able exactly to make things more efficient and profitable. And I thought a pretty interesting move was that they took down the full self-driving from $200 a month to a hundred, you know, it's not full self-driving, but it's, you know, as far as all the cars go, it's the closest one. And I really think that's like, just to get people kind of hooked on it to increase their revenue, to price people into it. Because I know now they're they'll give you a month for free, you know, to like any good drug dealer, they give it to you for free at first, and hopefully you stay hooked and keep buying it, which can you know further help their revenue line. Remind me not to visit California. <laughs> wow, no kidding. <laughs> Too many free first, things out there. First of all, I learned that in Dare in Ohio. Okay. <laughs> Ohio. <laughs> Parts of Ohio are like California. Never mind. But the uh, Gold Gate Bridge, yeah, to make sure you don't cross over that anytime. Soon. You All right, can't. You got the. <laughs> <laughs> they they blocked station. 
that's another station i started it i'm sorry um so we uh i read today that uh there the tesla as a company is trying to give elon his 56 billion that he had coming before and the judge denied him so now oh, they're putting it to right. a vote yeah they're putting it now to another vote i guess for the shareholders to say, hey, should we give Elon his $56 billion that he had before from a friendly um, friendly board that awarded it to him before? So he's trying to get that. And they're also voting on moving the incorporation down to Texas. Um, so they're trying to get out of, I'm not sure where it is though. Where's the current, is it in Delaware. California? Delaware. It's in Delaware? Okay. Delaware. That's where a lot of things are in Delaware. Why is that? Well, tr Why? traditionally, they have the best business friendly, uh, like legal structure and like uh, courts there. But obviously, with Elon not getting his payout, uh, you know, it's kind of spooked a lot of companies to think that they might not be so business friendly anymore. And I don't know how much you guys know about um, this particular case, but I was listening to a podcast and they were talking about you know, like this pay package was made like years ago. Right. And when right. they made the original pay package, everybody on the board was like, you're an idiot for taking this because you're never going to hit the numbers required for this payout. But if that's what you want, you can have it. And then he did it, right? He got Tesla to where it is to like, yeah. you know, he did it fair and square. And now the judge <laughs> is like, yeah, we're, that's too much money. We're not going to pay you. But it was like, you know, he'd like, it's no cash. It was all stock. He like didn't really take much of his salary. Just like what he did was like, you know, yeah, fifty six billion, kind of crazy. But like, it sounds like he earned it fair and square yeah, as far yeah, as I'm concerned. Yeah, he definitely made it pop, as they say. <laughs> it's not like the Boeing CEO having like a thirty million dollar like salary, and then you know the company literally starts falling apart in the sky, and yeah. still get paid out, right? <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you could say, "Hey, he blew his blew the doors off the expectations." Yeah, Boeing's not a place where I want them to build a plane as they fly it. You know, horrible pun. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's move on to the fly. back. What? That will never fly here. Oh, <laughs> nice, nice follow up. <laughs> let's depart this section and go to <laughs> macro factors, which is here. And here. Yes, which uh, no, planes no. need. <laughs> uh, please have your seat in the upright position and quit swinging it around, Royce. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, it. I do it too. <laughs> hey, it's a broken chair. Blame uh, the manufacturer. Right. I don't have any more puns. I have no more puns for that, for planes. All right. Uh, we're talking about oil now, which planes use. Um, and is it uh, stable for now? Or I think we sort of touched on it earlier, but um, I mean, is, is so, so we talked about war that affects it. Supply yeah. and demand, of course, affects it. Uh, they keep through it. They used to throw China in it all the time about whether or not they're using enough oil to affect it. But we don't hear about that. Just like we don't hear about Russia, Ukraine war anymore. They moved on to something else. Um, so what's, what is OPEC going to do here? What are they going to What's the next move well, for them? So OPEC has been cutting their output, right? Because they like expensive oil because they make more money and it kind of squeezes sure. the U.S. But, I, you know, I think the question here is like prices are up 20% since October and the U.S. is becoming more oil independent. But does the Middle East use or, you know, I should say OPEC use this you know, kind of war going on right now as a chance to squeeze the U.S. and make oil really expensive, which, you know, everyone knows our inflation continues. Or do they kind of step in and help out so things don't go absolutely crazy for everyone? And so they I don't get attacked, right? So, so yeah, planes I mean, don't come I, in and I, attack their oil. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I personally think they would want to, you know, kind of support the world in this one because if things get out of control then I think that doesn't vote well for them either as being like the global player they're trying to be now. That being said, like maybe this is a pile on effect of, uh, you know, the powers that be of trying to shift how the world works. Yeah. Switch to EV, make a demand for oil and basically none for you all for the war. Right. Yeah. 
Which is unfortunate because it show, consumers have shown that they don't want EVs, hence why all the major car manufacturers have cut output of EVs and Tesla is hurting right now. Mm -hmm. well, hey, I'm going to file mm -hmm. a buffet on this one. I'm just waiting for my price point. That's <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, I, it, I, we could do a whole other uh, six hours, I think, on the powers that be, as he just said. So um, we won't. There's get another back to that coin, too, though. Uh, to Daniel's point, though. Yes. If you have to keep oil where it is, right? What's to prevent the U.S. from saying, me too? Let's sell out oil to them, too, at this higher price. Like, if they can yeah. make money, why can't we, too? Well, let's build up our reserves back again instead of stop. Instead oh, of trying no, to we decimate have a deficit it all. To, to, to pay off. Keep the oil where it is. Let's make money. <laughs> oh, so you don't want well, to fill well, up the reserves? War, war is actually good for our debt. Right? right? Because yeah. if if we go to war, then we can they'll easily pass more spending, they'll drop rates, and then we refinance our debt and can buy our debt and eliminate a lot of it. Exactly. Exactly. Is that why they say say daddy bore bucks? <laughs> it's called or, modern monetary or, theory. Or, or poppy, poppy war bucks. All right. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, it's Wednesday. It's not Friday. Listen to I me. need a wall. Um, I need a wall right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so this this wager, we'll go ahead and get it out of the way. Um we were tied going into to, to this week. It was one to one to one in this competition. So really, I guess nobody owes anybody anything. But um, this week was kind of the rubber match. And the setup was that Daniel was 863 and above. Royce was 833 to 863. And I was 833 because I had no other choice because I was last and below. And where did it fall? Come on, it's Royce. What you got? Where is it? 835. That's where it was after the bell. Yes. Yes. It tried to get down there at 833, but it just didn't quite. And Daniel had no shot. And it, it was just all the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So this is what happened. You know why he didn't have hey, a shot? Hey, hey, remember who makes the agenda for this podcast every yeah, Monday. <laughs> but but he consult he consulted his friends at the investment. That's why they didn't, you know. They they said, I Oh, have let's no get him relation too. anymore. Let's let's yeah. get him. Too. You got like they, they should see us throughout the week as we brag, talk smack, and all yeah. this stuff. Like, I saw it at like 9 20 ish earlier uh Thursday, Friday, and I'm like, oh well, Daniel has this one. And <laughs> and then I saw uh, it up too. Then I was like, hell yeah. And then like <laughs> this week came around, I was like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> and, oh, it's miserable. And Darren was looking at the Euro versus NVIDIA. I did. Yeah, I, I the saw room. that. I was like, Aaron, <laughs> like, what are you doing? I, this is this is why you don't brag because I had <laughs> taken a screenshot of what I thought was the U.S. The U.S. Yeah, nope, <laughs> that was Nvidia. in Euro, brother. <laughs> and it was in Euro, and it was like, look at this. All today, this happened. I got all the way down to where I needed to and more. <laughs> it was down to seven ninety six. I was like, yes, I got this. And then Royce came in and corrected me like he likes <laughs> like uh, I'm winning. It's like what do you mean? <laughs> the hell? He's, He's big in your He's big in your <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Send me some pounds oh, or euros or whatever they're gonna decide to be this week. All right, never mind. Don't be mad. Don't be mad, Euro. Uh Eurozone. <laughs> no ice. All right. Anything last minute? We do have to do another wager, and we're going to do it awkwardly because we have no idea what we're doing uh, for next week. What's going to be our wager? What What sounds fun and good to, to go for? If, this if I, I say if Royce has one in mind because he won, we can go with him. If not, I have one. All right, let's. That's let's a good rule it, too. That's it. a really good rule. What win, okay. winner can pick unless they don't have one, and then we can. Okay. Yeah, there. Throw it up. Yep. Toss it. New up. rule. Yeah. All right, I want to do the VIX. VIX. Oh, my Ooh. God. You'd like to play. And, and I, and I uh, well, actually, Royce won, so he gets to pick first. I just hope he doesn't yes, take he does. my But I was going to say you Vixie would be kind of fun, too. But, yeah, VIX. Okay. okay so, VIX. Hold on, I have to do Royce, some analysis first. first. Uh, some quick gonna... analysis. No, 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 no. You, ha you have to free ball it. You just got to look at the side real quick. I tried that last week to say you could, and you kept doing your uh, level twos and all that stuff over there with your institutional right. I have done nothing of the sort. All right. 
your WhatsApp. <laughs> so, I am saying from where we are, from where we are, there's a I'll, I'll give you the ranges that I see. So I see okay. basically the top out range is somewhere around 2079. The bottom of the range is around 1282. So basically that's hey. the playing field. That's the playing field. So where do you guys want to dive in? Well, hold on. First of all, what did it close at today? Because that's what we're 1822. That's 1822. So that's important. Um, and Roy should get to go first. So man, we should say, okay, he gets to to set the well, uh I'm, boundaries. I'm saying, we need to all three agree on that. So yeah, I'm saying that basically it will not uh go it will not go above 2079, period. Okay, but so, what's your range? Um, 2079 <laughs> to 1779. Let's do that. 17. So that's a three dollar spread. Okay, that way everyone fits within the window that I provide the, the 1282. So, yeah, yeah, that means that's, that's a lot though. of volatility, or maybe not a lot of volatility at all. If it, if it does nothing and cools off, then we watch this guy fall from the sky. That's tough because I, I mean, this next week could really be crazy. Um, I wanna, I wanna take the over. Oh, it was your choice, so. Twenty eighty nine. I, 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 I was gonna, I was gonna say over nineteen, but you said twenty seventy nine, so I guess I have to go. So over you're that. basically twenty. Uh, can 80. I get it? Can I get it over twenty? Okay, just over. Oh, he's over, gonna give up. Royce is gonna give up seventy nine cents. I'll do it. Seventy nine dips. Do. I'm gonna give. All right, all right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You know what that that does? So you've got uh, you still go down to seventeen. So it's seventeen to twenty for Royce, twenty plus for for Daniel, and I'll take under seventeen. I'll do that. That's fine. Can I can I share oh, yeah, my screen? Will that range. work? You got the biggest range do down there. Yeah, yeah. Especially if it gets manipulated down. No, so that save, made, that, yeah, manipulated so I mean, down hey, to save the presidency. He's pro market this week. He's pro can you guys see my screen? No, uh, no, no. share uh, it. Oh, I it's am. Is it descriptive? What are you looking at? <laughs> All right. So pretty much on the daily, I'm looking at the VIX and we have a big support trend and resistance trend coming together right where the RSI for the apocalypse bands meet, right where it's hitting he head right oh, now, wow. finding a top. So mm -hmm. it's like, like, you know, Ro Royce is spot on. It's either going to like break through and like do something or like completely go down because these trend lines are like years old they're like the two biggest on the wow. X. and then Where's like uh, Where's i don't know it, right well, where, let where, me where, uh, all, where, where does the doomsday hit <laughs> so it's when it topped out um at about 18 1880 yep 188 so you see all the lines converging at the same time, there's, at there's two big trend lines converging okay. there, and then along with the RSI of the apocalypse band is right there, and then after that is the median line, and then you know everything else. Yeah. So, so and then we might actually got 2072. So if you can just get in between there, you got this. Wow. So, so it, could, it could either rip, which means the market is gonna tank, or it'll just hard drop down, which means you know the mar market's going back yeah, for its rally right mode. There. I don't know. The bank term lending facility is not open anymore. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I wish but, I could but share you my know screen. what? The apocalyptic band might actually but <laughs> come true by name. <laughs> <laughs> the name will hold true. <laughs> All right, guys. If we're still here next week, <laughs> we're the doomed. apocalypse we're hasn't happened. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in to see who, if if uh, Royce lengthens his lead. Or if one person will only have one win and the other two will be better than them next year. We'll make fun of that. Person. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they lose their bathroom pass. All right. <laughs> so thanks, everybody, for joining After the Bell. We will see you next week. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, Royce. See you guys. Thanks, Darren.